the LBLCS. It's your boy Chungus Karen, cat or actually just streaming this game, and I got Old No Name and Apollo cast in this. Yo, what's Hi. up? Uh, not a lot. So let's let's talk about some of the teams we got going on. I think it's Silver Drillers were. Is this executive or economy? Actually, that's a good way to start. This is economy league. This is an now. economy game. Yeah, we have a couple silvers mixed in here, one bronze and some gold. So this is definitely economy. All right. Well, and I think this is actually our first economy game that we got scrim or streamed this year. Um, yeah. So we get to see some fun action. I know we had uh, Frank's Little Beauties kick off the Executive League last night. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's start uh, looking into these teams. Yeah, so um, we have uh, THC and Silver Drillers here, as you already said. Uh, and so I'm really well versed in uh, THC's uh, team, actually. I'm, I'm pretty well aware of what they like to do uh, and how they like to play. I'm less aware of the Silver Drillers, but... Uh, I think that there's a lot of different ways that THC can approach this game. Um, and I'd really like to see them go a little more aggro. I know they have it in them. Usually they like to be pretty passive uh, with you know their picks uh, across the board uh, and kind of scale up and, and go for uh, neutral, neutral objectives and control the map. Uh, I'd really like to see Waffles Classic Lee Sin, and I'd like to see them try and get an early lead and roll with it. Um, but, you know, we'll just have to wait until the draft to see what happens with that. Right. Now, with that said, uh, what would you like to see today, Apollo? Honestly, if you were talking about the side of THC wanting to go for the scaling or the aggressive, I'd just like to see, I guess, a good counter pick coming up from the side of Silver Drillers. I mean... Not certain exactly what their style is yet, but if the opposing team is looking to scale, play through neutral objectives, maybe try to go an aggressive counter pick top matchup with red side, and then try to really punish the top of the map, maybe snowball the game so that they can't get that scaling advantage that they want to get. Sure. So I can tell you, uh, they're, the Dutch Krampus, the Happy Canadians top laner, is uh, quite the set player. Ooh. Um but I do know that the Happy Canadians have had quite the off season, uh, and they put a lot of effort into practicing their uh, other champions and trying to expand their roster so they can't uh, just be outmaneuvered in picks and bans. Uh, so I am interested to see what happens across the board here. I know that uh, Dutch Cramp has expanded his roster. Uh, Kev has allergies, has most certainly, and so has Waffles. Um, and so I'd really like to see. Uh, if they if they decide to flex those new picks in game one, or if they're gonna go back with their uh, classic in in game, uh, you know the classic go back to their classic fix. Yep, thank you. Yeah, and for sure, uh, yeah, it's good to see uh, champion flexibility is something that will pay off as the season progresses and as metas change. Being able to flex those picks around, being able to really uh, just be immune to the pick ban phase a lot of times would be really good for their side. It looks like we're going to be starting draft in just a second, so I'm excited to get into that. But yeah, you say the set in the top side, I may be considering my reconsidering my earlier point a little bit, as set is very good at nullifying a lot of those lanes, those type carry type matchups. So it, we're going to see the Silas ban come out from TC to start. It came out almost at the speed of light, uh, which has to be somewhat intrigued. Um, and Silver Drillers is going to respond with the Cho'Gath ban. Now, Cho'Gath is a very uh, common pick, and it's a flex pick for the Happy Canadians between both mid and top. So I'm not surprised to see that come out. Um, and it seems like Silver Drillers really want to punish the mid lane here. They, uh, they, they ban the Cho'Gath, they ban the Vigar. They're trying to take away the scaling options from the mid lane. Yeah, and as we can see, there will be the set band, actually banned away by THC here. As you said, they were looking to play it, actually not going to look to play it. They're going to ban it away. And yeah, so far it looks like five solo lane bans. So both of these teams really trying to get now six. It's looking to try to get a lot of these problematic tank matchups out of here with the Orn, the set. But that will be the first pick, Caitlyn. Really good priority in the bottom lane. Has really just been stomping the meta recently in the bottom lane. So, 
Yeah, and I'm really intrigued to see what the Happy Canadians do with this top lane. Because if I was thinking about this from their perspective, seeing that first Cho'Gath ban, my thought process is, you ban the Orn, you pick the set, or you ban the set, and you pick the Orn. But they ban both. So I really want to know what they want to pull off in the top lane, where they, they don't want to be seeing the Orn or the set on the other team. Now, it's clear that they wanted to prior the Caitlyn. Maybe they worried that uh, the set would get picked when they prior the Caitlyn, but I don't know. Now, Silver Drillers has responded by picking Hecarim and Scion. So they have very clearly put their uh, all of their marbles in the scaling pit. Yeah, they are. Hecarim getting those buffs on 1016 makes them a little more adept at dueling. And uh, Scion, you ban out four tanks and you get another one as Volibear is going to be the pick here from THC. That is a flex between the top and jungle like you spoke about. So... We're going to have to see where that one goes, as there is still some draft flexibility there. And we're waiting on this final pick here of the second rotation. I think that the Volley Bear is going to be headed top, and they're going to pick... No, they're going to pick mid here. I thought they were going to pick jungler. I was wrong. Um, is that mid? I would I'm, put money. Uh, I'm going to say that that might not be a mid panth. Yeah, I mean, mid Pantheon does flex between four different roles at this point in League of Legends, so... There was something that I actually wanted to point out when if we're looking at the different sides. I think THC has done a really good job. Okay, and actually Silver Drillers did it. I was going to say they have to pick their ADC here, and I would have actually gone with the Jin or the Ash, because I think Lucian has a little bit of a short range against the Caitlyn, but THC has done like a really good job of kind of taking uh, a very meta pick and then kind of putting their own spin on it with a little bit of cheese with the uh, Pantheon Volibear. Kind of like, where is this going? Yeah, looking to really snowball and stomp the game, in my opinion. Caitlyn adept at taking towers, Volibear, Pantheon with the point-and-click stuns can really just tear through early skirmishes. But I do kind of like the Lucian into Caitlyn. The dash helps get close that range gap a little bit, some early damage, and hopefully a little, maybe a little bit of safety into the Volibear Pantheon if he does take something like a cleanse here. But uh, into phase two bans, what do you think about those, no Uh I think that those are just solid picks for bans out of what they don't want to see. Um, and something I wanted to add was that Lucian could also be mid lane, uh, and oh. that might be part of their decision to pick it, is that they could flex it later on. Um, because I do think that that is an okay pig into Pantheon, and we don't know where Pantheon is going, but I do believe that Kev Has Allergies has the most experience on it, so we'll have yeah. to wait and see. But Silver Drillers has picked up the Senna, uh, which leaves me intrigued as to what their plan is with that. While I would like to see a Lucian set a lane for the lore value, I don't know uh, I don't know how that one works out. Yeah, uh, despite them being husband and wife in the lore, I, it, it's a rough lane, honestly, trying to do two different things. And uh, yeah, it will be the Morgana locked in here for THC, so going to get that super powerful bot lane of the Kate Morgana, looking to punish what basically whatever silver drillers can throw at them and they're going to round it out with the new new so you are correct it will be the pantheon in the mid lane most likely i was not expecting the new new pick but i think it's a really good one here now we talked about you know uh silver trailers draft is already scaling pretty hard just with the hecarim scion pick and so THC is forced to be a little more upfront about it and i was expecting waffles classic new sin because that's usually what he goes to but Nunu actually allows for a lot of lane pressure, uh, which I think is a really good choice for them, especially when you have something like a Pantheon where an early kill can make all the difference. Um, and with that said, Silver Drillers Oriana into the Pantheon. So it is Lucian bot lane, or so it appears. It could hypothetically be an Oriana bot. That is not the worst AP carry in the bot lane. Uh, but I do expect it to be mid. So what do you think of this draft so far, Apollo? I think if this game goes past 25 minutes, THC could be in a lot of trouble. But for the early stage of things, with the double point-and-click CCs in the solo lanes, with lockdown like Kate Morgana and an early ganking jungler like Nunu, no pun intended, they're really just looking to snowball this game here as hard as they can, as often as they can, and try to punish these late-game scaling picks on the side of Silver Drillers. On the side of Silver Drillers, I feel like they need to just try to Maybe camp camp the bot side with the jungler a little bit. Maybe just keep that bot lane safe. Make sure that Kate Morgana can't push completely under 
the turn and hopefully just get the Scion and Orianna scaling for that late game. But overall, I like both compositions. They're both definitely two different styles, trying two different things. Scaling definitely on the side of Silver Drillers, but we'll have to see how it goes since we haven't seen these two teams play just yet this season. Now, I do want to add, um, I, I like your analysis, and I like that THC uh, recognized that they had to play earlier uh, when they saw the scaling coming out of Lithion and Hecarim and, and attuned their picks accordingly. But um, the thing I want to add is that I think uh, the, the thing about fights has 25 minutes, and the reason that THC might not just lose them uh, is that both comps are extremely good at running past the front line and onto the back line. Scion and Hecarim uh, both can do that very effectively, especially if Scion has a teleport flank. Um, and so can Nunu, Pantheon, uh, and Volibear. And so I think a lot of the late game fights, or not late game, let's say mid game, uh, are going to depend on who can peel for their damage dealers better. Because if Lucian, Senna, and Oriana fall before uh, the fight even begins, then Silver Drillers won't stand a chance, even if they have two of the best scaling uh, brawlers in the game. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and both sides do have a fair amount of peel, some point-and-click CC on THC, you have stuff like the Scion Q and Ult, the Hecarim Ult and E for Silver Drillers, as well as the Senna and the Orianna, so a little bit of self-peel there, but you are correct, a lot of these champions, if they get on top of these squishy backliners, it could spell trouble for Silver Drillers, and also, another thing to look at for the side of THC is possibly... Uh, Maybe going for an early Drake soul if they can with the Nunu, with the Pantheon pressure and Caitlyn Morgana. I would not be surprised if we saw something like a 25 minute Drake soul this game. Now, what uh, soul do you think the, uh, the Happy Canadians would be looking for most? Ooh, with that composition. Uh, so, not so with, with stuff like Nunu, with stuff like Pantheon and Caitlyn, you really don't want Cloud Soul that much, though it does, the, the movement speed would be very useful for those champions. I mean, Infernal Soul's always really solid, but I would say Ocean Soul here. They have three pretty beefy champions with a fair amount of sustained fighting with the Volibear, the Nunu, the Pantheon. So if they could roll an Ocean Soul, that would be good. Honestly, I don't think there's like a bad soul for this team. Being able to yeah. get like a mountain soul even would cut down that front loaded damage from the Hecarim and the Scion in team fights, maybe give them a little more survivability. But yeah, not certain. We'll have to see on that though. Yeah, uh, knowing how THC plays, I actually think an Infernal Soul or a Mountain Soul would be great for them. Um, just being able to whittle down that much easier or not get burst down uh, in a split second is is very useful especially given how fast Hecarim can get on top of you, potentially. Uh, but with that said, I tend to agree. I think Cloud Soul is weaker than all of the other ones, mostly because they just want raw stats. Um, but other than Cloud Soul, there's really no no big problem. And Cloud Soul still has its benefits. There, Some of those ults can be pretty useful. Um, and having that increased rotation power on the Pantheon it will allow for a lot more map pressure. But we'll just have to wait and see. You know, we don't know what... Uh, what type of map it'll be when we get to the game. Having some issues. Uh, For whatever reason, it won't show any lead client. It just shows all the overlays. <laughs> oh. <Great. laughs> <That's laughs> <That's> unfortunate. <laughs> low budget. Yep. <laughs> Did we mention that we're a low budget? Yeah. <clears throat> Man, this is when we really need that clip of LeChance to just play. That 30-second clip of us. Oh, that, that I can play if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, play it, play it. Yeah, let's go ahead and play that. I assume we're getting that pulled up. I'm trying, man. <laughs> it was just yeah. a long pause. There was a very long I'm pause. Gonna, I'm just curious. gonna pull a little bit of a pull a little bit of time until then. So uh, yeah. So before we get to that clip, uh, what is your prediction here? 
Ooh, I got it. Uh, as to who's winning? Yeah, who's who do you think's gonna take game one here? So it's really tough to say. Ooh, Both of these before cops... we're ready. Hold on. <laughs> oh yeah, here, here we we'll go. get like that in just a second. Yeah. To the low budget LCS. Here we offer a lot of different services. Delayed games. Pauses for 15 minutes. Not being prepared at all. These are just a couple of things that we bring from our home to yours. Thanks for joining us at the LB LCS. We've got no money. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Uh, now, as we get into game here, and as we try and figure out the technical difficulties that are causing us to be incapable of uh, catching the game, uh, to return to Apollo's question, I think it's hard to say who's going to win outright, um, but I think it'll be more clear once the game is already going on. Uh, I think in a sense, THC has the harder comp to execute because they have to take advantage of the early game. Uh, but they also have a comp that allows them to take easier advantage of the early game. Um, so as long as they can, you know, execute on that, uh, then I think they'll be in a fine position. I think, alternatively, if Hecarim is able to get two early kills, uh, it's going to be a steep uphill battle for uh, the Happy Canadians, because a fed Hecarim is one of the worst raid bosses in the game, in my opinion, and I don't think that the Happy Canadians team has the tools to deal with it. Yeah, I, I could see that, but also, I mean, they do have two point-and-click CCs in the Pantheon, the Bully Bear. You have Caitlyn Traps and the Morgana Q plus R combo. I feel like a lot of peel on their team, like, they can engage and disengage both pretty pretty quickly, in my opinion. So it actually may be a hard game with the Hecarim unless he gets some of those clutch and unstoppable ultimates off. But... We'll have to see. I mean, this all does come down to execution in the end. We have to see how these two teams are able to play this out. If the side of Silver Drillers is able to keep their composition safe or possibly even get some leads through the, the gank potential of Scion, through the gank potential of Illusion Senna lane. But yeah, as we get into the game, I'm super excited. and uh, I'm actually I'm going to pick Silver Drillers here. I, I personally like their composition quite a bit. I like the Scion. I think it fits well into this team composition. I'm going to pick THC just to create some conflict. Fair um, enough. I do yeah, think, I was hoping for that. I think the, uh, the Lucian uh, doesn't bode well into the Caitlyn Morgana. Um, at least the Lucian Senna as a lane doesn't pro like show enough strength uh, for me that I think they stand a good chance. And I think that a Fed... Caitlyn, uh, with both behind it, is is a scary thing. Um, okay, so additionally, I have huh? Oh, uh, I, I have also. Yes, um, I am waiting for things to happen on my screen still, though. Yes. Uh, and additionally, I think the volley bear, as a Scion player, uh, and as someone who has been forced to play volley bear for the sake of my own team, uh, <laughs> I think the playing Scion into Volibear is a miserable thing. And so I think that I think both the bot lane matchups and the top lane matchups are, are in THC's favor, and so long as they can carry that into the mid game, uh, I think we'll see a THC win. Yeah. yeah, so as we get things started here, it looks like a possible five-man invade from the side of Silver Drillers going ahead and heading to that bot bush. Looks like it will be warded out, though, by the side of THC. Lonely Company going to drop that ward on the Morgana that really saves them there, because that could have been something that cheeses a game one straight up. Yeah, especially with the, uh, you know, difference in comps here. I think that even though uh, Silver Trillers have a weak early game, they don't necessarily have a weak level one, and losing some out on some stuff early could really hurt the strategy that THC appears to be going for. Um, but I do think, I also want to commend THC. I think, you know, they did a good job snuffing that one out. Uh, and I think in general, they're pretty good about uh, finding those sorts of things and understanding where to position and, and what to do in those situations, uh, you know, before minions have spawned. So credit to them. 
Yeah, it shows the quality of stuff like that five-point defense, having the Morgana go down there, drop the ward, stay safe, because if a Scion was able to sneak in through without any vision, that can spell really tough things for the side A THC. Looks like we have junglers both starting bot side, which means there could be some early top lane action around level three. And looks like bot lane should be able to farm out pretty much with that with that pathing. Now, while Senna takes a good chunk of damage, uh, mm -hmm. I would like to point out uh, that I don't think THC has any vision. I actually don't think any either team has any vision in either team's jungle. Uh, but I do think that uh, like both teams know that they've started on the usual side. Uh, so I'm interested to see what they do with this information. There's a lot of early skirmishes going on. Wow. Yeah, the Pantheon going for a quick trade there in the lane. Very important for him to do that for maybe levels 2 through 5 especially, just to make sure that he can try to get some damage down, control the lane before Orianna really is able to get items like the tier, like the Lost Chapter. So yeah, we see junglers pathing up to their fourth camps, looking to hit those level threes. Should be looking for some action soon, maybe around this mid lane, maybe around the top lane. But yeah, as you as you stated in draft, it looks like the Kate Morgana definitely has a lot of priority. Is the binding's gonna land here under the Lucian and get a big chunk of damage down? And Bob's just executing that combo like perfectly. That was gross. That's the kind of thing that would just make me very upset if I was playing AD Carry in this match. Yeah, it, it's gonna feel bad for quite a while, unless they're able to actually get on top of this comp. But oh, that should just be a dead center right there. And that'll be first blood going to the Morgana. Able to pick that up with the auto attack and the ignite. And already punishing with this Caitlyn Morgana bot lane that is so prevalent in almost every level of competitive play. It it really is impressive, and I gotta give credit to Lonely there for uh, stepping up and being ready to throw out the bindings and try and get that early opportunity. Uh, you know, I think that's really what they had to do in order to to get these early kills, and now that they have it, it's gonna be put the Senna Lucian lane in a very difficult spot. Um, with that said, I do also want to give a brief shout out to our our nice little race between Hecarim and Nunu that we saw right after Senna's death. <laughs> uh, I hope we get to see a few more of those. Very Looney Tunes-esque. Um, yeah. So, what do you think the Silver Drillers should be focusing on in order to uh, kind of regain some ground in the bot lane and reestablish themselves? Or do you think they should just go top lane and try and find a different spot? Uh, I, would, I wouldn't hate a possible even a mid gank here, but the Orianna is getting pushed out of lane. The Pantheon is full health, full mana. So it's going to be almost impossible to pull that off. Right now, I would say just try to farm safely because almost every lane is being pressured pretty heavily as they are supposed to be. They are, I mean, almost all these lanes are losing lanes. The Nunu's going to come down here into the bot lane. Snowball's going to miss, but the Lucian dashes onto the Caitlyn trap, and that's going to be a second kill for this bot lane on the side of THC as Caitlyn gets that one. Yeah, so, I mean, they're continuing with that lead. Caitlyn still hasn't made her first back for items, so I think we probably will see a BF sword, uh, which will oh, only sure. continue to spell trouble for their for the Silver Trillers bot lane. Um, but with that said, uh, I think it was just it was really uh, well done play by THC identifying that they could make that gank and that that would give them the priority they needed to get the dragon. Um, yeah, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of them so far. They're really following oh, the, up on that. The Pantheon just deletes Orianna off the map with the Execute from the Spear. And this is starting to look like quite a problem for the side of Silver Drillers. Not having any single winning lane right now. All lanes being pressured, including the jungle. And it looks like the snowball's rolling already. Even at five minutes, Cloud Drake picked up for their side of THC. And pretty much 1v1 or 2v2 kills in every lane. Yeah, this is looking pretty promising for THC. Um, like I was just saying, I think they're doing a, a wonderful job executing on exactly what we talked about before the game started uh, and, and really flexing their early game picks. I mean, top lane is the only place where they haven't uh, shown that yet, but even looking at the CS differential is is telling that they're still flexing it there. Um, what, what I would like to see for them oh, going here forward... Here comes the Pantheon coming bot lane. He's going to flash in for the stun. Flash will be traded out by the Lucian. 
There's nothing really able to happen there. But it looks like things will return to normalcy as some of the members of Silver Drillers are coming down towards the Scuttlecraft. Could be a little skirmish here, as the Oriana does have access to the Shockwave here. As Hecarim's going to pop the Ghost, go in on the Nunu. The follow-up from the Lucian's going to come down. Nunu flashes away. Hecarim's going to be rooted up, take a bunch of damage from the Caitlyn, but going to be able to get out of there with the Senna help. As a TP comes in from Scion, has the ult ready. The Q is not going to land. Going to go in with the ultimate, knock up the Morgana. This should surely be a kill, but the Zanya is going to go down from the Morgana. Has a couple more autos, and that'll go over to the Oriana, but it's going to be traded back onto the Hecarim. Caitlyn's going to pick that one up for a one-for-one one overall with the teleport committed and the five people in a 5v3. THC trades one-for-one. One. There has not been a single dull moment in this game so far. Uh, and, you know, I want to give credit to these two teams because... Boy, they make our jobs easy. <laughs> they they really they know how to be entertaining. Uh, but what I do want to say about that play is that uh, by teleporting bot, Scion has left top completely open uh, for Volibear to farm and get plating. Which you know, even now he's not returning. Volibear is looking poised to get the whole tower. And I think Volibear is one of the best scaling members of GHC. So Scion coming that into is the really mid lane spooky. here. It looks like he's going to get stunned out of the queue, though. Not really able to find anything here as Volibear just increases this lead to almost 30 DS plus the plating, as the Orianna was too low to even follow up anyway. And this is just so punishing. How do you come back from this on the side of Silver Driller? You know, that's a great question. Um, I think that what you really need to do right now is you can see Hecarim's on the bottom side of the map. You need him to get him farming on, on those minions up in the top side right now. Uh, and, and you need to be poised for Rift Herald. Uh, because if you can get a pick and find that Rift Herald, especially while there's no dragon up, uh, that'll really help you out in the like coming minutes. And it'll stop them from getting that and pressuring towers. Because if THC were to get Rift Herald right now, they could drop the top and instantly get first tower and plating. Um, yeah. And you really don't want to see that from their side. So the fact that Hecarim uh, is, is being stalled on his farm of, of his top side, not being able to get that red buff, uh, not being able to get these things. He's still getting the experience from the mid lane, uh, but it's not quite the same. It's a little worrying. Um, if Nunu's able to capitalize on that and take the red buff from him, that would be very bad for them. Yeah, and also that vision in the red side jungle of Silver Drillers, that control ward in the bush spotting out the Hecarim, really clutch for the Nunu who was about to invade. But the Pantheon's already in the bot lane. He's back onto the Lucian. Ignite dropped down, exhaust onto the Pantheon, but that's going to be a dead Senna there. Killing spree for Bopes on the Caitlyn, able to take that one down. As it looks like a snowball coming in from the top side, here comes Nunu, going to knock up, stun up, and the Scion should surely go down here if he gets the flash, but it's going to be blocked. The old block by the Nunu, and the red buff taking, and that's going to go over to the Volley Bear. Huge play on the side of THC, extending their gold lead to almost three and a half thousand. And that's, again, just incredible uh, map awareness from THC. The fact that they knew they could send Pantheon bot and get a kill there, and send Nunu top and get a kill there at the same time. The ability to make plays across the map like that really flex their lead. Truly impressive. Um, yep. Now, what do you want to see from from Silver Drillers in the next two minutes uh, to help them recover from this? Turtle and Prey. You're down about 4k gold at 10 minutes. It's rough. You're into an early game composition. There's very little they can do. I would say just try to farm safely. Get what gold you can. Hope that the opposing team tries a, a, a suspect dive with maybe a volley and a pantheon. But even under tower, you're hardly safe against a lot of these champions on their side, I for sure don't want to see them try to fight for the second Drake, as there's really no way they're able to contest this. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Oh, Nunu's coming back bot lane, and Lucian's caught out again, gets stunned out of the dash with the snowball. He's going to be rooted up the volley ult committed for good measure, and that'll be another dead Lucian. Now, 302 on the Caitlyn in the bot lane, getting very strong, already sitting on a Storm Razor as the Hecarim's walking up to face check, but the Volibear's still here. Gonna stun up and try to set up for this Nunu as the ult comes down from the Hecarim, able to get him out of there. But the Sin is still in quite a bit of trouble, gonna take the Caitlyn ult and get down to about 100 HP, but is going to live, but this will be the second dragon for the side of THC, and that means either the mountains, or either the ocean soul, or the infernal soul. Two huge 
objectives available for THC. Yeah, oh, the binding kind of lands, about... and this could be a death on Messina here, gonna shield herself, and it's gonna be the ult committed solo kill in the supportal combat, as the Pantheon's gonna flash over the wall, but Lucian's gonna have to commit the flash once again and get out of there, but having no flash on that AD carry has proven to be very rough so far. Yeah, uh, and we, we talked about both of those Dragon Souls uh, before this game started, but I think I'm not sure how much I really liked that place for THC. I think they committed more than they had to there, uh, and by doing so, they lost a lot of that uh, CS advantage in the top lane. It's back down to 20 CS, which, you know, still notable, but I don't think it was necessary, and they lost the planning. Um, I don't know what... Pantheon getting taken quite low here in the mid lane could get slowed up by the Orianna, but the Ignite's going to come out, but that's just going to be an easy solo kill for the Orianna, now sitting at 2-1 and one with a CS lead. And an interesting fight taken by the Pantheon there with a health disadvantage. That's the kind of plays that, that Silver Drillers really needs to look for. Just anything that is able to get them an injection of gold right now is going to be huge for getting them across that mid-game. Yeah. Uh, and so if we take a look at the teleports uh, across the map, pretty much all of them are up. Um, you know, Oriana has hers. Scion has his. Uh, Volibear has his, and Pantheon has his ultimate. Uh, and so I feel like we could see some pretty wild plays coming up, especially as this Rift Herald is, is started up, and I think uh, Silver Drillers recognize how important it is to not let them get anything that's going to allow them to grow this uh, gold advantage even larger. And it looks like we're going for a skirmish here. The Hecarim ult not available yet. The Nunu's going to use the ult, but Oriana also doesn't have ult from the last fight against Pantheon, so this is going to be a rough one for the side of Silver Drillers, as Scion looking to try to get out of here, trying to run away, but it's going to be slowed up, stunned up, knocked down eventually. That kill is going to go over to the Nunu as this Scion zombie form is going to try to go in and trade back whatever damage he can. But the bot lane here for the side of Silver Drillers going in, the culling going to be committed, and that's a shutdown for the Lucian onto the Senna, able to pick up 400 extra gold off that kill there. But the Rift Herald will go to the side of THC. Probably not able to get plates off of it, though. We'll have to see. Now, I really liked the individual execution on that fight from Silver Drillers. Uh, the way that Hecarim used his E to get out of the immediate trouble, uh, the way they kind of danced around it, but the fact that the Scion fully committed and wasn't able to walk out um, really was the death of them there. And they're gonna, it looks like they're going to lose this mid-tower because of it. Um, and that's gonna that's gonna be the first tower gold over to THC. Um, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be. And one thing that was big there is the Scion did commit on what looked to be a promising fight. But a lot of times, one thing that can be hard to track is teammates' ultimate cooldowns. And both the Hecarim and the Oriana had just committed their ultimates not 40, 50 seconds ago. So unable to use those, whereas the Hecarim ult and the Pantheon, or the Nunu and the Pantheon ults, were able to come in there and do big damage in that fight, really able to swing it back for the side of THC. Yeah, uh, I also just think I would like to see uh, more, you know, decision making from uh, Silver Drillers that would mean they either go in as five or, you know, they just hold back. Uh, because I don't know if they're in a position right now to contest when, when they don't have all five. Um, and, you know, if, if Lucian and Senna were there for that fight, I would have felt a lot more confident. Uh, but, you know, they, they didn't have the ability to make that call, and I don't know if it made sense to go in 3v3 with the current uh, gold differential. But I definitely agree that the, uh, the ultimates made a big difference in that fight. Yes, yeah, it looks like Scion chasing Volibear through the red side jungle here. Not much to be had there. So he's just going to walk it out. But the next dragon will be coming up here in a little less than a minute. And it will be the Infernal Soul coming up. So a big fight could come around this objective. Do you try to fight for this strike here? Or do you wait and say, okay, we'll have to fight for the fourth one? Yeah, so dragon is how many seconds on dragon? Looks like 30-ish. Uh, um. We, we see both teams positioning around it. Even the Scion with no teleport is walking down. Uh, THC is pushing up pretty far here, but I don't think they're really looking for anything. They just want to get vision and see what's going on. Now, yeah, all four of them are in this bush. I... 
Ooh, Scion Dash like... Force pre-fight there by the Nunu and the Pantheon walking in. As they're just playing target practice here, trying to look for any pick they possibly can. But it looks like THC going to set up the Caitlyn traps and probably just go on this objective as Hecarim takes the Blast Cone away. As the, the side of Silver Drillers are split up here, this could be a rough fight for them as the Nunu Snowball cancels the Scion W. And the Volley Ult going into the back line, going to try to dive in, but they're getting very low in this play as the Lucian trading back quite a bit of damage. And Sin is going to shut down the Volley Bear as Lucian trading on. And the Oriana Ult's going to pick up another. That's two kills for the side of Silver Drillers for the one on the side of THC. But that will be the Senna taken down as the Lucian try to chase here onto the Pantheon. So close to getting him down. But he will walk it out with one HP. And the fight for the Dragon continues here. As it's pretty much a 3v2 as the Pantheon is so far out of the fight. But he does have that ultimate. He can return here with that Ghost Blade movement speed and try to make a difference here. Could be some cleanup to be had. I think THC recognizes this too. They're not backing off. Yeah, they are not backing off at all as the Hecarim's looking to just burst this down. But the Volibear TP in there, he's going to be able to clean up one. He's probably going to be able to clean up two as the Oriana flashes back into the pit. And she's able to kill the dragon, crucially able to stop that soul snowball. Huge play air from Ruined to be able to get that. Does trade his life for it. But the Pantheon ult comes into the mid lane and it's not going to be effective at all as Pantheon pretty much has to go back to base off of that. But yeah. At the end of that, we have about a 5.5k gold lead for the side of THC, but the dragon crucially goes over to the side of Silver Drillers. Yeah, I think that skirmish, I mean, overall, it was pretty even. Uh, I think four people died on the side of Silver Drillers in total, and three did for THC, but uh, Silver Drillers got the dragon. It, at this in, you know, at this stage of the game, when you're this far behind, that is the fight that you absolutely take as the Silver Drillers. The ability to, uh, you know, even go even in a fight is is a very good sign moving forward when you have the scaling comp, and the fact that they were able to fight it out like that is, uh, is it was very nice to see. It was a good change of pace. Uh, with that said, THC executed immaculately with that teleport flank and not backing down. Uh, the way that Morgana and Caitlyn applied pressure was uh, was was just beautiful. Yeah, the Morgana and K pressure was huge in that fight, but also the Lucian with the Blade of the Ruin King was able to work down a lot of these tanks within the dives. Looked really good there from both teams kiting out the fights properly, looking like a pretty high level of play so far in this game in the fights from both teams. Excited to see as the Baron spawns in about 45 seconds. Excited to see how teams play around that objective if maybe the side of THC tries to snowball with that. Yeah, uh, I think that that is absolutely something that they would want. The question is, can they get it? Uh, I think especially after the way that last fight went, I don't know how... Uh, I don't know if they really feel comfortable trying to force a fight around Baron, um, which means they have to find a pick or do something to uh, you know, make that Baron an option. Uh, speaking Sion of a pick, here. Sion caught pretty far out here. Volley's going to stun him out of the queue, and he ults onto the Morgana. It looks like they're going to try to trade it back, but Morgana already sitting on the Zonya is going to be able to get out of that fairly easily but the damage trade overall going heavily in the side of silver drillers is the scion q is not going to land but both of them chunked out very heavily on the side of thc as the hacker is going to ghost in here ult onto the caitlin she's going to have to flash out overall about an even trade trading that ghost and the ultimate for the flash on the enemy ad carry probably worth yeah i gotta say i'm impressed that bobes did not get caught there uh, that did not look like an easy situation to get out of as an AD carry. Yeah, it was a really well-timed flash to be able to eat both the R and the E from the Hecarim and get out pretty much unscathed. However, the Hecarim, not sitting on much damage just yet, did opt for the Cinder Hulk first item and the Moby Boots and a couple of Dax Speed Daggers, so not much else to really be coming in in the side of damage from that build, so pretty much able to get out scot-free. Yeah, I'm not uh I'm not sure what the meta Hecarim builds are looking like, but I'm intrigued by the purchase of the boots of ability. Uh I think it's you know really promising, especially when you need to have these rotations around the map to help your team recover. But I also think it's it's worrying because it kind of reduces your in combat movement speed, which for Hecarim both reduces your movement speed and your damage. 
I guess you don't really have an issue catching targets because of your E, but uh, I don't know how that affects play style. Yeah, it, it, it can help with the beginning damage on your first E in combat, but I would prefer to see the swifty boots, swiftness boots, to be honest, as it looks like we're going to have a fight here in the middle lane. Morgana ult going to go out down on two. Scion caught in the middle of things here as the Pantheon ult comes in, and Scion's just going to be taken out as the Pantheon's diving the Lucian under tower. The tower's been disabled by the Bali ult, and the Shockwave's going to catch the Morgana as she's getting dangerously low, going to die to the culling there, one for or two for one. As the Hecarim goes in and kills the Pantheon, but he's going to die for it. Three for two. Caitlyn grabs two more kills. And it's going to be an overall fight win for the side of THC. Yeah, and I think a win here is particularly bad for the Silver Drillers because this is going to allow uh, THC to really have like a bit of a playground for, for the next few minutes uh, if they want to set up around Baron, if they want to set up around Dragon. Uh, you know, they have they have the ability to make all of those calls. Um, and so I think that's worrying if you're on the side of Silver Drillers. That said, uh, their respawns are short, uh, and I think they can see them rotating towards the dragon, and they want to match. So we'll have to see if there's a fight coming up. Yeah, there's no such thing as a breather in this game right here. It looks like we're just going to be straight back into the fray here. So we already have Cinna face checking. Is Lucian stopping the Caitlyn traps in mid? Probably needs to go ahead and rotate over to the Drake as they are starting that up with the Caitlyn. Should be able to burn it down pretty much. No problem is Cinna just deleted off the map by Caitlyn damage. That headshot doing so much work. It's the Scion trying to frontline here. Going to miss the Q. This could be a pivotal fight as the Scion's going to be caught in the middle of the enemy team. And the Hecarim's going to be able to kill the Volley Bears. The Shockwave lands on the two. It looks like a three for two so far. So the Hecarim's trading back very well, able to get three kills there for the side of Silver Drillers. This Hecarim has been huge in these last two fights. Absolutely. I'm still recovering from the Santa death, so I apologize if you have to give me a minute. Uh, but, wow, that fight was just a showstopper in so many ways. Uh, I think the fact that uh, Silver Drills were able to make out with that much after it went so poorly at the beginning is really impressive. And I think that THC uh, is recognizing that they're going to have to start being afraid of the uh, con of the Conqueror Hecarim now. Uh, now that he's starting to build up. Because, yeah, so wow, that was a hell of a fight. Yeah, so we're about to see Caitlyn's back here. She's been out on the map for a long time, able to pick up a full Infinity Edge and a Zeal. Should be hurting quite a bit more in these next couple fights. Just thought I would point that out because she's now sitting on 10 kills with a 700 gold bounty. And if they are able to get onto this Caitlyn, it could be a huge influx of gold for the side of Silver Drillers. But she is currently very massive on this champion. Yeah, 10, 1, and 4 with the most CS in the game. That is uh, definitely something to be afraid of. Uh, I really, I really hope that DHC can be on top of their um, kiting and their peeling so that they can keep this Caitlyn safe. Yeah, that is important for them, but one thing I'd like to point out is the damage type on the side of THC is pretty much all a lot of early game arm, or a lot of early game AD champions. So this Scion, while he's very underfed, is really effectively building armor items here and should be able to tank up pretty easily. As the Morgana is going to get Shockwave here, dragged pretty low as the Sin ult comes down, Lucian ult comes down on top as well as the Scion ult coming in to follow, going to hit onto the Morgana, hit onto the Caitlyn. She's most definitely dead, and that's a full shutdown as the Volley Bear is going to get cleaned up here, and that's a three for zero for the side of Silver Drillers, and they're going to look to go straight to Baron here with the enemy jungle and bot lane dead, and that evens the game up so much as they already had control of this area. Now, that was a fantastic call from the Silver Drillers, but uh, they, have, they are far from resting control of this game. As uh, you can see that the Vile Bear was getting all the way to their inhibitor tower. I think incredible call uh, being able to use a Scion ult like that and catch the both the Morgana and the Caitlyn. Uh, it really turned the title of the fight to the Silver Drillers. Uh, but five towers to zero, even with Baron, that, that's, a, that's a mighty task to uh, take on. Yeah, it really is. But also another thing to point out there is a that does mean there's a lot of standing gold remaining on the map here for them to clean up with this baron if they're able to so if they are able to get some pushes down and take some towers with these fight wins 
that could mean this gold lead could return pretty much even. And if they're able to fight for the next dragon and win that, it's going to look very hard for the side of THC to finish the snowball here. Yeah, so, I mean, I think that THC still poses such a threat that it's going to be really difficult for uh, the Silver Drillers to find anything uh, unless they group as five. But, I mean, you know, 4K down with Baron, there are, there are worse spots to be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 4K down, especially with the scaling composition, we're interested to see where this goes here. It looks like they're having the Scion solo farm on the top lane. About a minute till Dragon, he can ult down, but he may look to try to split push, shove that turret down, but they will need him for any type of team fight as they're looking to engage on the Lucian here. Hecarim goes in with the ulti, but he's just going to get burnt down nearly instantly. So the Shockwave hits onto two, but there's just not the follow-up tank or damage here as the Pantheon's getting drawn quite low, but it will be the first kill there as the top turret does go down, but the Lucian getting dragged very low, but he's now unstoppable able to kite out the new new there and it's a one for one overall and are they just gonna give soul here there's no way they're, they're they're having to reset as the jungler's dead and the scion is shoving heavily in the top side maybe able to get two turrets here with the baron but it's gonna be really necessary that they go ahead and regroup here on the side of silver drillers get back to the drake and be able to take that crucial objective here they've sent the pantheon back to uh deal with the scion Getting a little over ambitious there, but uh, as you can see, they're really uh, they're keeping their control around the dragon. They're trying to push out the lanes. Uh, yeah, it looks like they might be looking towards the Volibear, but I don't think so. Uh, it looks yeah. like both teams are really recognizing that they can set up around this Drake, and they're recognizing how important it is. Yeah, Nunu just committed. Nunu just respawned, and Pantheon just ulted top. So that's going to be a free Drake here, and that puts another five minutes on that possible soul. And with the gold influx, this Scion just bought himself a thorn nail. Huge for himself, getting more and more of these tank items. Really going to be able to tank up a lot of this frontline damage that he's going to be able to take, whereas the other side has to worry about building both armor and MR into the Orion Illusion. Yeah, I mean, I still think that the Nunu provides a threat definitely to the uh, AP carries. Or not the AP carries, the uh, squishier people on Silver Drillers. But, I mean, it's going to be really hard for uh, the damage to come down on the Scion to take him out. Um, that said, Scion's still going to need to get to a point where, you know, people like Bopes and Kev can't ignore him. But it's it's getting spookier for THC. They still have the lead. They have control of this game. Uh, but they got to they gotta make sure that they can find the play that's going to allow them to close it out before they get out of scale. So what do you think that THC's next move should be? I think their next move should be win within the next three minutes, because if they're not able to, I think this may be done and dusted, as they've lost the last two or three team fights, and it's getting rougher and rougher. As one thing I want to point out, this Lucian, while having a very rough early laning phase, he was 0-2-1, now sitting at 5-2-6 with a bounty, has been kiting out these fights extremely well, able to keep himself safe in most situations. And really, really showing how good this pick can be into a lot of these tankier dive champions. As the Hecarim going to commit here onto the Pantheon in the top lane, and he is getting quite close to death as the Ghost is possibly going to run him down. Nope, Pantheon going to get out of there with the Yomu's Ghost Blade. There's a possible dive coming in the mid lane. Uh, the Kohling's going to be committed to clear out that wave. And the Lucian going to take three quarters of his HP bar in one auto attack. And the Scion getting hurt in the front line. They're definitely going to have to back or at least life steal that up. Gosh, that Caitlyn headshot crit was massive. Yeah, wow. Uh, that's that's got to go in a compilation somewhere. Um, now, there's an important thing about that fight, which is that Scion actually used his ult to try and get to the Caitlyn, but I think it landed on the new nail. Um, and so he does not have that for another, I think, 80 seconds or maybe 60. Yeah. But either way, um, you know, I think I, I really want to commend the way THC has been, uh, you know, approaching this. They have four in the mid lane, one in the top lane, and they're they're kind of they're forcing the attention of the gold there's in a way, or of the silver drillers. Apologies, in a way that's really not productive for them. Uh, so shot happen. down onto two, but the Lucian going to trade onto the Nunu, and the Nunu cut down really quickly. But the Cinna getting taken low, going to shield herself with the 
piercing or with the dawning shadow sorry but yeah some ultimates traded there pantheon gonna be able to take that top turret and both health bars are getting low but it looks like silver drillers may have to give this inhibitor turret possibly even the inhibitor is two or forced back into base and caitlin should just walk up and take this freely but the culling gonna come down smartly be able to clear out some of that wave but the scion getting taken low here the Nunu doing some pretty decent damage to him as the Volley ult's committed, but the Nunu's getting taken low. The Hecarim diving into the back line, but he's going to ult the wrong way. He's going to be taken out. Pantheon's going to get taken out in the back line as well, though, as it's a one-for-one one and the inhibitor still stands. W, Pierce of the Blackness, barely missed, but the Caitlyn's going to be taken down early in the fight as the Lucian's still going off. As the Sinna not, Sinna's going to be able to get away temporarily from the Nunu, and the, they are chasing down onto this Morgana, a three-for-three three so far. With the health bar lead going to the side of Silver Drillers. As Lucian is looking to chase down. Not really going to be able to find anything. And it looks like it will be an even 3-for-3 three three fight. Both sides picking up some crucial kills. Yeah, and I gotta I gotta commend uh, Dragon X Caliburn on that one. Uh, he was able to get into the range of the Caitlyn. And, uh, you know, chip her away right at the very end so that she wouldn't be able to get out of that. And that is not an easy task as a Lucian going into a Caitlyn. The attack range difference there is quite large. Uh, and so props to him for recognizing his opportunity and being able to uh, kill Caitlyn for only the third time this game. Uh, that is a lot of shut get down gold going on in their AD carry, uh, which, you know, could be a, a huge issue for THC because he is not... <laughs> he has not been doing the greatest for the rest of this game, and that bit of gold could really put him over the edge. Um, yeah, cru yeah. crucially enough, though, the Mortal Reminder that for Caitlyn should help her cut down this Scion quite a bit quicker. Could be really nice there. It looks like we're going to be fighting around this Dragon in just a second, as expected, as the Scion getting taken pretty low in the front line, just down to about half with the Leandries from the Morgana. As the Kate Trap's coming down, they need to get in this pit here. you got to get in there. Come on, and the Drake Soul's just going to be easily taken by the side of THC, and here comes the ensuing fight. Oriana forced to flash away by the Pantheon. The Nunu's going to look to go in here as the Scion's getting burnt down in the front line. And it looks like just a full overall win for the side of THC there. May look to trade this instantly towards Varen as the enemy top laner dies. And a, lot, a really late commitment there from the side of THC. Would have liked to see an early Scion ult, as it looks like they're just going to try to run this mid. Not sure if they're going to look to end, but maybe take this inhibitor here. Let's see if there's any resistance against that. Doesn't seem to be. So Caitlyn could be autoing right now. Looks like they're going to go onto the Orianna. Holly ult committed. Not for much, though, as it misses. Senna's going to get knocked up in the back line, but the inhibitor will go down with that zoning as the shockwave's going to hit onto the Pantheon, and he's surely going to go into the GA in just a second. Nope. Going to survive with the... Oh, never mind. He is going to go down into the GA there. But he's going to jump back onto the Orianna, going to get taken out here by her, and it will be a one kill traded for the mid inhibitor. So overall worth for the side of THC getting those super minions spawning in the mid lane. I would tend to agree, although I think it's unfortunate that Pantheon went down because that gives them a lot less power to uh, pressure Drake with. If he had gotten out, even though he wouldn't have had the health to stay around, uh, he could have gone back and had the alt pressure. Uh, but now they really can't hold this, and if they, you know, reset, that might give Silver Drillers the opportunity they're looking for to snag their second Baron. Uh, with that said, I want to give, uh, I want to commend the Happy Canadians, and they are going to start this uh, Baron, but I want to oh, commend the... Yeah. Silver Drillers going to start the Baron here, actually, as they're looking to catch them in the reset timers. They all just took a base on the side of THC, and this just could be a free Baron for the side of Silver Drillers. Nunu's pretty close by. Down, and that's already dead. They're just going to sneak a Baron. Really nice play there. Able to sneak that objective, knowing those enemy recall timers, able to take them out. Able to, well, not take them out, but able to take the Baron out. And that should help stall just a little bit longer. Yeah, the, the nice thing for THC is that they were able to get that inhibitor down in the mid lane, which is going to make uh, any change they attempt to do a good bit more difficult, and I would imagine that's where the Silver Drillers would like to look if they wanted to get something oh, done. Oh, Shockwave onto the Caitlyn! She's gonna get taken low, and she's taken out before the fight! Huge there! Huge pick from them, as they're gonna look to follow up. The Morgana's gonna get rooted up, and she's gonna have to go into the Zhonyas, but she will surely be taken down here. 
as a shutdown, and they're going to look to just push straight up the middle of this map with the 5v3 advantage, and they're going to look to crack open this base, possibly, as the Scion accidentally cancels the ultimate. Not able to find anything there. That's a huge engage tool gone, but the W lands onto the Volley Bear. It's the Nunu looking to possibly go in, cancels it instead. And they're just going to look to break straight into this mid inhibitor and possibly continue. Yeah, it looks like they want to continue. This could just be Silver Drillers trying to close off of one fight here. I think this might, they might be fighting off more than they can do. It's only seven seconds on uh, Bobes. Yeah, the, there is some respawn timers coming up. The turret's getting low, but the Volley Ult is huge with the Infernal Soul, but he's going to be taken down. Cinna Ult going to shield up everyone. But the Pantheon's getting taken low, and that's a double kill in the front line. Scion gets taken down as well, though, so it's a 4v3, and the Caitlyn has respawned. Oriana's going to go down, but so is Nunu 3v2 three three now, and that's Ekrim needs to block, but the Sin is going to use the stopwatch, but she'll be taken out straight after that. As Lucian looks to trade in, gets the Morgana down to 1 HP, and the Caitlyn's just going to one-shot him off of it. So overall, able to get quite a bit off of that play, equalized a lot of the gold, but there is a bit of a power play here for the side of THC. Huge fight there coming out of both teams, ends up being a 4 for 3. Actually, a 5 for 4. It was such a long fight. It was... <laughs> Five for four, I guess, for the side of Silver Drillers, but... Yeah, <clears throat> wow, so much happened there. Um, uh, before that fight started, I was I was going to commend uh, THC for doing a great job playing front to back around that uh, Dragon Soul. Uh, but, you know, right as I was about to do that, the Caitlyn gets caught out, you know, being a good chunk in front of the Volibear and the Nunu. Uh, and that's what allowed that whole segment of events to happen. Um, so I hope that I, I I'd like to see them, you know, execute better on that in the future because it was really wonderful to see them uh, get that done in that last fight. Um, but with that said, I don't know I don't know what to think of this game right now. Uh, the Barons off of Silver Drillers, so they they lose those stats and the ba the minions. They might have who is it who still has it? Um, let's check Hecarim. Hecarim has timed out of Baron. He does not have it. Okay. It looks like um, it has timed out, but the Elder Dragon crucially going to be coming up here, and this could just be the game decider. Silver Drillers needs to get early control of this before the Caitlyn Traps can come down and lock them away. And it looks like they may be able to here as a fight is brewing. Scion and Oriana still in base, probably need to TP in here. It looks like Drake Pit control will be seeded to the side of THC. The Caitlyn going to walk up and place those crucial traps in front of that cl that's clutch corridor, and they may just look to rush this Elder Dragon, as no one can really tank the Caitlyn damage at this point. They may need to no. look to attack from a flank. I would like to see them get a different angle on this, but it looks like they are just waiting patiently for the fight to begin. Um, you know, if they were to group around that bush over there, or, or go around the bot lane to that other bush, then I think yeah, they I'll have a few different Elder angles. Has but... Spawned, but the super minions are flooding into the base, of Team THC, the Morgana's going to get caught out early, forced to blow the stopwatch defensively, but the volley's onto the back line, and it looks like the Morgana will be the first to go down in the fight, but the Hecarim will be able. It looks like the Scion's getting taken very low, and it will be a four for one so far, as the Oriana's the only one left alive, and it looks like it may just be the game, possibly, or Elder, for the side of Team THC, but the Oriana TPing into the base, going to go for the back door here, She's gonna backdoor the Nexus, the volley going in with the stun. Gonna get her so low, but that's gonna be the game for the side of Silver Drillers. Able to backdoor the Nexus and take game one. Absolutely steals a victory from the side. Unreal. Unreal. Oh, I got so oh my goodness. I, I unplugged my microphone, but. I. That, I Huge I can't play. believe what I just saw. I am very rarely speechless. I feel except like right now. Right now, the three of us are, are the meme of those sportscasters who are just watching what's going on with awe. I'm I... standing up out of my chair, head in hands. Or, well, no, hands overhead. Not head in hands. That would be if I was a THC fan. But, but overall... Oh, Amazing game from both teams, really showing how close and competitive these games can be. One more auto from the Volibear 
could have been enough to break, make or break that entire game. But it looks like it will just be the win there for the side of Team SD. Silver Drillers. I, I got to give credit to THC. They did exactly what I asked. They played that fight front to back like champs, and they got four kills to one. Uh, but as soon as they did that, they didn't recognize the notification that said their tower had been destroyed, and they started the Elder. Uh, and, and that allowed some really good like awareness and, and calling from Ruined to just teleport in and end the game uh, before they yeah. could even respond. Yeah, and that's huge, though. Really amazing play, though. And I like what you said. They did win that fight. They did crucially do it. But, the, but from Ruined, the Oriana making the clutch play, able to get in there, able to make that difference on that last-ditch effort, able to get away from the Elder Dragon to get that teleport off. Absolutely huge play from both teams, and who knows what to expect when this game 2 rolls around. Just things have been crazy so far. And to and leave even more things up in the air, I actually have scrims with my own team right now, so I believe we have someone picking it up for me, but... As far as Chungus Karen uh, send or streaming, uh, I have to. I was waiting go. to hear you say that on the stream. Oh, hey, La Chance. Yeah. What's, What's up, up, buddy? Chance? What's up? It's been me. I've been hiding in a cardboard box in the corner of the room the entire game. Yeah, it's really creepy. I, I it's didn't been like weird. You saw there. me. We've been making eye contact. I, I apologize. Was that the breathing down my neck? I, it was. I always thought that was just Buck Sawyer, but he's actually next to me, so. I truly, sincerely apologize. To everyone that's watching, what's right about to happen is that Chungus Karen is going to cut the stream, and then I'm going to jump back in. Will the overlays be in the right place? Will everything be where it should be? No, of course not. This is the low-budget LCS, but we're going to be back in just a second. Preload that video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's see what happens. Good luck, folks. But we'll be back in just a minute. 